a cricket, and there's more. Then at half past seven, we go to Crystal Palace, London, where top track and field stars gather to compete in international athletics. At half past eight, there's comedy in the last of the present series of Marjorie and Men. Then at nine o'clock, there's comedy drama in Shine On, Harvey Moon. And at half past ten, following the news, we continue our series about the Victoria Cross. For Valor, taking us up to eleven o'clock and our Friday evening movie, Witchfinder General. With Colin Lamont. Good afternoon to you. The news this lunchtime, eight jobs will go on the Isle of Man next month when production ends at Rathbone's Bakery in Douglas. Last year, 50 people lost their jobs when the oldest bakers on the island, Quirks, closed down, blaming falling demand and increasing costs. 500 friends and admirers of the poet Hugh McDermott gathered in the pouring rain yesterday for the official unveiling of the controversial memorial to the poet at his Dumfrieshire hometown of Langham. Ronnie McNaught ran with a symbolic torch from the house where McDermott was born in 1892 to the hillside above the town where the bronze memorial stands. McDermott's widow, Valda, unveiled the sculpture, which is in the form of an open book. The site is the third to be chosen by the Scottish Sculpture Trust, who commissioned the project. The previous two were rejected by local planners. An inquest will open later this week on a Carlisle man whose body was found in the River Gelt near Brampton at the weekend. He's been named as 23-year-old Andrew Baxter from Warwick Road in Carlisle. Members of the EIS Scotland's biggest teaching union are planning their latest round of industrial action in the region's schools when the new term starts next week. In addition to selective strikes, all activities outside normal school hours will now stop. Manx police have issued an appeal for witnesses to a road accident in which a woman cyclist was seriously injured. The woman, who hasn't been named, was hit by a van shortly after 10 a.m. at the junction of Circular Road and Peel Road in Douglas. She's now in the intensive care unit of Nobles Hospital. A joint civilian and military expedition has succeeded in climbing all 348 English peaks over 2,000 feet in 21 days. The six army men were all from the 1st Battalion, the King's Own Royal Borders Regiment, and included Lieutenant Adrian Potts, Lance Corporal Michael Burgess from Carlisle, and Private Tony Joyce from Whitehaven. They finished their climathon at the Ellswater Hotel Glen Ridding yesterday lunchtime, and as well as establishing a record for the event. Manxman Rick Tomlinson was on board pop singer Simon Le Bon's yacht Drum of England when it capsized yesterday in the Gill Hit Fastnet race. Rick, a 26-year-old professional photographer and an experienced deep-sea racing yachtsman, telephoned his family in Port St Mary Isle of Man last night to confirm that he was safe and well. Over 240 anglers took part in the Scottish Federation of Sea Anglers One Day Festival at Eyemouth. Borders fisherman Jim Mihalter from Hoyk landed the heaviest individual fish, a 3.5 kilo cod, though the overall winner was Edinburgh-based John Meeklejohn. George Marshall from St Boswell's increased his lead in the Scottish Rally Championship at the weekend when he won the Borders Rally centred on Galashiels. Another local driver, Alistair Brearley, finished fifth, and Murray Grierson from Dalbeatty, who's lying second in the championship race, came in sixth. Football and Queen of the South have added another player to their books. Manager Nobby Clark signed Stranraer midfield man Jim McBride after he played in Saturday's opening match of the season in which Queen's beat Stenhouse Muir 2-0. McBride joins his former Stranraer colleague Tommy Bryce at Palmerston Park. 48-year-old Eric Milliken from Rotherham won the British Long Distance Swimming Association's annual Venerals Championship at Coniston yesterday for the second year running. His time for the three and a quarter mile race was one hour, 35 minutes and 44 seconds. The ladies' title was won by 40-year-old Margaret Smith from Caister in Lincolnshire, who reckoned the water temperature was the coldest since the championship started in 1968. Finally, the glorious 12th has donned with several local hotels competing to be first to put grouse on the table. Birds shot in the moors at Inner Leith and in the Borders were rushed to the Swan Hotel at Grasmere and are now on the lunchtime menu. But Bob Slack from the Muta Hotel near Cockermouth was up on Alston Moor even earlier to get some birds for breakfast. Bob, who says he'd do anything for his customers, plucked the birds in the back of a Rolls Royce as he sped back to West Cumbria. But on the Isle of Man, the shooting season has had to be postponed until later this month because grouse stocks are so low. Well, that's all the news we've got time for this lunchtime. We will, of course, have more for you in our Look Around programme. That's at 6 o'clock this evening. Join us then if you can. Until then, from all of us here on the news desk, a very good afternoon to you.